Let's see here. Hey, everybody. Are we good? We good? Ooh, I gotta flip it. Hold on. Let me get this rocking. I'm sorry. I had this and then I decided I was gonna mess with it. So, really isn't that beneficial for anybody. Hey, Abs. Don't mind me. We had this all set up and then I messed with it. Those go figure. Okay. So, howdy, howdy, everybody. Dr. Markell here. You caught our third and final presentation of why can't my kids stay healthy? Am I doing something wrong? So, before we get rocking into the nitty gritty, I want to just give people a little bit of an opportunity to tune in. So, we're just going to chat here for a little bit. Um, as I said, my name is Dr. Markell. I am a pediatric and family chiropractor here in Healing Touch Chiropractic in West Fargo. So I jumped ship, ooh, rather, I joined uh, Healing Touch about a year ago, coming up in April. So I joined, hey Michael, joined Dr. Tiffany Johnson. She is the owner of our beautiful practice and my fellow chiropractor here in, in the office. Uh, Healing Touch has been around for about 13 years now, coming up in September. So in that time, we have seen thousands of miracles. We've helped hundreds of families in the Fargo-Moorhead community uh, heal from the inside out with chiropractic care. Our mission is to transform lives, and that's why we're hosting this workshop tonight, and that is why you are tuning in. So unless you have been living underneath some tropical rock like my brother and sister-in-law do, like, I swear, every, like, January, February, uh, unless you've been living underneath a tropical rock, you are very well aware that our winters here in the Midwest are crazy. We have snow and ice and sleet and rain and hail and, oh, hey, here's a warm day, and then it's windy, and then the cycle repeats. But what other player comes with wintertime with the change in seasons? Any guesses? It's cold and flu season, or what experts call cold and flu season. So experts, and I'll quit, I'll quit saying that like I'm trying to reinforce the point. Um, people say that cold and flu season lasts from October to May and affects everyone from the young to the young at heart, okay? And so um, it seems like every year they always say this is the worst that they've seen it. This is the worst strain ever. So they encourage everyone to get the flu shot. They tell you to sanitize everything and they say to make sure that you stay in bed. This can be super overwhelming for us as parents. There's a million and one pieces of information coming at us and how do we decipher it and sift through it and then all the while make healthy decisions for our family and for our kids. What if there was a way that we could change the trajectory of our family's health? What if we knew exactly why our kids get sick? Because if we knew why they got sick, in theory, wouldn't it be easier to come up with a game plan for what to do? Many of us take a backwards approach to our health. We focus on the effects instead of the cause. This lands us in hospitals and clinics and doctor's offices and waiting rooms several times a year and time after time for the same thing. Sore throats, runny nose, tummy bugs, um, respiratory garbage, the list goes on and on. This gets old in a hurry, not to mention super frustrating. What the heck's the deal? What's going on? We're going to dig into it tonight. Why do our kids get sick? Why can't they just stay healthy? We're also going to be talking about why the traditional stuff that we try, the antitussives, the decongestants, why that stuff doesn't work. And then I'm going to give you some actual steps that you can implement starting today to boost your family's immune system, to get your bodies working for you at their best. So like I said, uh, my name is Dr. Markell with Healing Touch Chiropractic, and here we are talking about your kiddos, their immune systems, why they're sick, why they can't get well, what we can do about it. So uh, when most people use the word flu, they're actually referring to a respiratory disease caused by a virus, and that virus comes from one of two camps, influenza A and influenza B. And influenza A and B catch a ton of flack, they get a lot of heat. But what most people don't know is that influenza A and B are only responsible, forget this, 
for 10 to 20 percent of the symptoms that we think of as associated with the flu all right the other piece here is that um, it is influenza A and B that dictates the materials in the flu vaccine all right so the Center for Disease Control the CDC actually uh, shared a stat they share these stats every year but it uh, actually tells us that the flu vaccine isn't even that effective at taking care of influenza E and B the two things that it is geared to treat all right this year 10% success rate I don't know about you but I don't know if I would do many things if the success rate was 10% I, I just I don't know if I would so combine the 10% success rate with the 10 to 20 percent chance that your symptoms you have are caused by influenza a and b which is what the flu vaccine treats those numbers are staggering they are staggering people oh sorry i got an itch okay so the biggest takeaway here is that the most marketed product out there for preventing flu symptoms only prevents 10 to 20 percent of them that means 80 plus percent of the symptoms out there aren't even being prevented all right and um, my intention with sharing this is purely educational the more we know the better armed we are to make good decisions for our families for our kids okay so um, here's the thing with our bodies there are actually before that if you were to ask someone what or who dictates our health dictates how well we are a lot of people are gonna say that it is all up to um, that it's all chance if you have good luck you're healthy if you have bad luck poor health some people might say that it depends on genes you get from mom and dad so it is black and white things are either good or they're bad some people might even say that they have a design flaw that there is something wrong with their body hopefully by the end of tonight we are going to blow all of that out of the water okay so here is the thing people our body is made up of 11 separate but very important systems okay and these systems all work together to self-regulate and make sure that our body functions and plays along smoothly so imagine if you will working with 10 people on a project or if we're gonna go the sports route imagine a baseball team well that's only nine softball that's 11 no that's 10 okay so there's no sports team that has 11 players imagine a softball team without a coach oh my gosh or a project without a leader no 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 this is why the body needs this is why the body has a master master bruh, I'm not even from the south a master control system the nervous system the nervous system is responsible for coordinating not just your immune system but your digestive system every process every function every movement in your body is coordinated by the nervous system so if there wasn't the nervous system to take the reins and make sure things are happening these systems would constantly be fighting it with each other and it would be a struggle to self-regulate that's why the body in all of its beautiful design has come up with a gas pedal and a brake pedal so gas pedal most of us are familiar with because it is our lifestyle gas pedal it is fight or flight it is push it is go it is divide and conquer on the other hand we have the brake pedal the brake pedal is going to be rest and digest and relax and heal and it is very crucial that there is a balance between this gas and the brake pedal we don't want one more than the other nervous system is also really important because it dictates how our body fights off and prevents viruses and bacteria and toxins and all this garbage from overtaking our systems all right so what does the nervous system have to do with these pedals that I'm talking about or how do the nervous system and the immune system tie in okay there are two parts to the immune system as well so the first part we're going to talk about is going to think of them as the pusher outers so if you think of your body like a castle because we are all princesses and princesses princesses and princesses well I can say that we're all women in our office well that all the people that work here but anyways you think of your body like a castle all right we have the castle we've got the moat with the alligators circling around we've got the drawbridge that keeps people out oh you can't see my hands not that it's important and then we've also got the cannons that fire off invaders 
These are our front line attackers, all right? They keep the bad guys, the bad dudes, the war outside of the body. These are our classic signs of illness, of the flu. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm not meaning to do quotes to make anybody mad. It's a real thing, I understand. Um, so when we think of uh, fever or vomiting or diarrhea or coughing or sneezing and snot and ear drainage, that's actually there to get the gunk, the junk out of our systems, okay? The other side of the immune system takes a little bit different of an approach, all right? Those are like the, the come on inners. So they tell the bad guys, come on in. So bad guys come into the castle, the body, and then battle starts. So the war is waging on and our troops are getting stronger and stronger, all right? Um, Symptoms are going to be a little bit milder, um, probably going to last a little longer, and we, most of the fighting is going to be out of sight. We're not really going to notice that it's there. So you might be thinking, oh, that sounds, that sounds like the ticket, that's what I want. And you might actually have even triggered like the word antibodies in your mind. The problem is, is when those come on inners, when that side of the system is prevalent, it actually gives way for our castle to be overtaken because the bad stuff, the viruses, the bacteria, the garbage is already in. So it is when this happens that we see allergies and asthma and autoimmune conditions because the stuff is in and we can't get it out and it just, it becomes irritating. So now maybe you're backpedaling and you're like, all right, I take it back. I want the moat with the alligators. I want the drawbridge and the cannons to do all my fighting. Also not what we want. The castle can mount too much of an attack. So really, we, we need both sides of the immune system working at their best to balance each other out. It is only when things work together that we have a, a well-functioning system. So I guess you would say good regulation equals good health, all right? So um, picture, if you will, uh, before we get into the puppy, you might be wondering why the dog's here. So. You might be thinking, don't they make medicines that strengthen your immune system? And don't they make medicines that maybe would address this gas pedal that you're talking about? What? Or this brake pedal and the nervous, what? Here's the thing. Most medicines are designed to stop, to prevent, to squelch. So like an antitussive, uh, stop a cough. A decongestant wants to relieve congestion. Um, an analgesic wants to turn off the pain signals. An NSAID wants to um, like kill a fever, essentially. We just talked about though, how these things are good. And not only are they good, but they're necessary for your body to push out the bad stuff. So when we take those outside in um, approaches, when we are using Pepsid or Tums or cough syrup or Tylenol or ibuprofen or what have you, not only are they not addressing the cause, but they're actually suppressing the good stuff our body has going for us. It's like turning off the immune system. And I shouldn't say like, because that's actually what it's doing. It is turning off our natural immune system. So now we have the, the puppy. So um, we've got our happy little puppy dog here and we're going to pretend that his name is Walter. I don't know why. His name is Walter, all right? And he's a happy little dude until a big, fat, hairy, angry Bergen comes along and steps on his tail. And if you've watched our other videos, yes, this is the same analogy because I love this analogy and I just really like to draw this silly little dog, okay? But it's a good analogy, so that's why I'm gonna keep doing it. So, the Bergen comes along with his foot, steps on the dog's tail. Dog, not happy clearly, starts barking. Bark, 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 bark. Okay. We're in freak out mode. The poor dog, clearly he's in pain and it's super annoying for as us and as us, for us. And it's also a little bit like, gosh, I don't know what to do. So we have some options. The first one, we could remove the dog's vocal cords. Dog won't make any noise if his vocal cords can't bang together. We could get the dog a shock collar. Dog will learn in a hurry that you do not make noise without getting shocked. We could give the dog some kind of medicine to snow him. Dog won't know if it's day or night, or if he's coming or going, and he probably won't want to bark. Or we could put the dog down. You know, that maybe, like we just want to put him out of his misery and we wouldn't hear him barking. Like maybe that's a good option. It is very apparent to us with this picture 
that the problem isn't, it's hard to point backwards. It's very apparent with this drawing, this simple little picture, that the bark is not the issue. You can see, and it is easy to understand, how if we took the foot, the big, fat, hairy, angry, burden foot off the dog's tail, the bark is gonna stop. The body health works that same way. So when we have snot and coughing and sneezing and vomiting and diarrhea and ear drainage, that's not the problem. It's the, your body's way of telling you that something is wrong, that it is working on it, and it's telling you to make some changes to support it for goodness sake. So um, we're actually going to be uploading at the end of our video, um, this really cool chart, and it is called the effects of subluxation. And I'll bring it in here so you can um, better know what I'm talking about. But um, just a little bit of a heads up, subluxation, right there, uh, it's a big fancy smanchy word, but really what it, it's talking about in chiropractic terms is talking about sit, stress in the nervous system. All right, so uh, I want you to think of it like an electrical shortage, like power isn't getting to where it needs to go, so it's an interference. The cool thing about this chart, and like I said, you're not gonna see it in our links right now. Abby's gonna post it at the end. Um, the cool thing about this chart is on this left-hand side, you're gonna see all the nerves. You're gonna see where those nerves go, what they supply, and then on the end, you are going to uh, see some signs, some symptoms, what might pop up if the communication between the brain and this area of the body isn't working. The um, the typical approach with decongestants and antitussives and NSAIDs and Pepsid and Tylenol, all that, is it looks right at this category. So let's see here. You can see uh, reflex and GERD. There's also uh, like congestion on here, fevers, um, tummy issues. So if we were to take that mindset, we'd look at this last column, okay? And we'd say, all right, how do we stop this? How do we prevent it? And we'd probably go to Walgreens or go to the doctor and find a medicine. Chiropractic takes a different approach. Chiropractors, um, so our degree or whatever you call it, uh, DC, Doctor of Chiropractic, also known as Doctors of Cause because we want to know what's going on. Why is this happening? Where did it start? How come it started? So instead of just looking at this last column here on the right and being like, okay, we want to stop this, we want to know what's going on. So we actually go back to the beginning, like where did this start? How do we fix it? This is what chiropractic is addressing. This is what chiropractic is all about. It's about restoring the communication between the brain and the body. Because when the brain and the body can talk how they need to, symptoms resolve on their own. Because your body is just well functioning, all right? So like I said, this, uh, if you can see it, this is going to be posted um, at the end of, the, of our talk here. So. What I want you to do is I want you to go through this and I want you to look at this far column and I want you to just mark off any signs or symptoms that you have noticed in your little ones or that you've even experienced as an adult that's really going to tie things together for you. All right, this next segment is probably really why you're here. Well, you probably are here. You want to know why. You probably want some action steps, the meat of it. So a uh, little disclaimer here, everything that we're going to be talking about while it is awesome and good. Um, really works in combination with the other things that we're doing. So just like one workout is good, five workouts are better. This is the same type of idea. These efforts, these behaviors, I guess you'd say, build off each other and the effects are cumulative. What we are not going to be doing is telling you and your family to go out and get the flu shot. We already talked about it having a 10% success rate. We already talked that the flu shot only addresses 10 to 20% of the, vir the symptoms that viruses cause. So what we will instead be doing is I am going to give you five take homes that you can start doing today to boost your family's immune system, keep your nervous system working well so your body can function well. All right. So uh, the first and foremost thing is we're going to be talking about addressing your stress. And this goes for adults. This goes for kids also. Okay, so with adults, it is really obvious to us when we are overstressed and overrun and run ragged and we're nervous and we're just stress balls. But you wanna know what? Kids go where we go, kids do what we do. So if you live a crazy, hectic, busy, stressful life, your kid lives a crazy, hectic, 
busy, stressful life. In chiropractic, we call that fight or flight. Fight or flight, what that means is your body is going down the interstate at 110 miles an hour and the brakes don't work. This maxes out your body, this maxes out your brain, this maxes out your nervous system, this maxes out everything. And so those kids, those people who are in that stress, that constant ah, cycle, their immune system is actually weak. It's not able to keep up. Research has shown that. So every little bug that they come into contact with, every virus, every bacteria, every toxin, every, the garbage, the gook, their system cannot get rid of it. This is why we see kids that have uh, like sensory processing or ADHD or anxiety. A lot of times those kids also have compromised immune systems because they can't get the garbage out, all right? So if you have a child or you are a person who is visibly nervous and wired hot and ticking and stressed, by it is it is absolutely imperative that you get your booty and your little one's booty under regular chiropractic care with a pediatric chiropractor, okay? Um, and it's really the game changer. So if you are interested in a story, I actually printed it out. Um, it's a story one of our practice members shared with us actually just last week. Um, and it's a long one, so just a heads up, but I promise it is worth it, it's a really good one. And I don't have it memorized, so forgive me that I'm going to read it, all right? No judgment. So, as we near our third anniversary with Healing Touch Chiropractic, I feel compelled to share our story. I tear up just thinking about how far we have come. At six months, our daughter started experiencing digestive issues. We tried dozens of formulas, high fiber foods, and probiotics. After a year of highly managing every single thing she ate, I felt I had it under control. Looking back, I now know we were managing the issue and not truly fixing it. At 18 months, Katie ended up in the ER with RSV. This event shaped our next year and eventually drove us to seek alternative solutions. Katie was sick often, her illness appeared to be more intensified, and it took her twice as long to recover compared to other children at daycare. There were multiple scares with her breathing that had us running to the ER. The doctors labeled her with asthma, gave us an inhaler, and told us good luck. How many of us can relate to that, right? By two and a half, Katie was taking an adult dose of Miralax. At two and a half, adult dose of Miralax, to regulate her digestion and was still sick more than most kids. I stopped taking her to run errands with me in fear that she would be exposed to any type of virus. One day I was just sharing my story with another mom who asked me if I'd ever considered chiropractic care. This one question has changed our lives. I remember a consultation with Dr. Tiffany. I just knew she was going to help. I sat there crying as I started to list all that Katie had been through. I just wanted her healthy and to get off that Miralax. We walked out with a game plan. In one month, I noticed a complete difference in Katie's tummy. She no longer looked bloated. We started getting adjustments for our son shortly after this. I knew this was the correct path for us. Katie is now five and healthier than ever. There is no more asthma or medicine, just daily vitamins and our trusted adjustments. This year, our kids were exposed to strep, influenza, croup, and multiple viruses without getting sick. That is nearly a miracle for us considering where we came from. Plus, we spent zero dollars on medical expenses this past year. Not one walk-in visit, not one eye infection, not one of anything. Our kids are definitely, are finally healthy, and for that I cannot thank Healing Touch enough. Uh, and then the other ones that I want to share, they're actually just little bur little blurbs, but we're going to have, uh, Abby will be sharing the, the link for our, our testimonials on our website, and so you can read all of these stories in their entirety on there. These are just, like I said, some little pieces that I want to share because they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, so, another mom, I'm no longer on meds for depression, anxiety, or my seasonal allergies. Our daughter has never been on antibiotics, never had an ear infection, and is rarely sick. We love going in for our adjustments every week. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Abby. Um, another one, our children have not been on any medications in the past 10 years. In fact, our seven-year-old daughter has never been on one medication, nor has had, a visit a doc has had to visit a doctor for any type of illness. If they get sick, it is for one to two days and very mild. Um, and then <laughs> this other one is actually from a four-year-old. I asked him, or his mom asked me, well, I, no, we asked him, we were both there. We asked him what it was like to get adjusted. And he said that after he gets adjusted, he feels brand new. Um, that, 
that's pretty cool for a four-year-old to have that type of awareness. Um, one more, and then I'll move on, I promise. There's, there's so many that just come to mind that I just want to share along with everybody. Um, another mom, a uh, practice member, her and her two young boys, actually, um, for the past couple weeks have been fighting, like, just run down, a little bit of congestion, some sore throat, some ear stuff. So I went to the doctor, and doctor said, well, there's no way you can have influenza. Like, your symptoms are too mild. No way. So tested them for strep and some other things. They all come back, came back fine. Doctor decided to check them for influenza on a whim. Once you guess it, positive for influenza. Chiropractic is not about not getting sick. Chiropractic is about managing our symptoms so we get sick less and less severe. The medical doctor that this family saw didn't thought there was no way in hell that these this family had influenza because of how well that they were able to still go throughout their day. That's amazing. That's incredible. And these stories are not from families who live in a plastic glass bubble, all right? These are mom and dad at work and kids at daycare and school. They have the same exposure to viruses and bacteria and garbage and toxins that we all do, but they are not getting sick as long or to the extent of the rest of us or to others is what I guess I should say. So uh, second piece I, of advice that I have for you to keep your immune system strong, keep your nervous system working uh, for you uh, is to get moving. So one of the most important ways that our body kicks out garbage is by sweating. And I know that it's hard in the winter time, it's stinking cold outside, but that is why God invented layers. And I know God didn't invent layers, but God invented a very smart person who invented layers. Therefore, it's like God is telling you to put layers on and get your booty outside and go to the snow hill or make angels or run around like a crazy person or just get active. And I don't just mean your kids, I mean you. Get sweating, get active, all right? Third thing that you need to be doing, sleeping. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. It is when we sleep that our bodies repair and heal. Now in the winter time, we actually need more sleep than other times of the year. So you maybe have noticed that you're getting tired earlier than, how, than what you do in the summertime. You do not have seasonal affective disorder. What you have is a well-functioning body that's like, oh, it's dark out that signals to my body biologically that I should be getting ready for bed. So do not ignore those signals Get your butt to bed at a good time and do it for your family too. Fourth piece of advice I have for you is not actually something I want you to do more of. It's something I want you to cut out. Sugar. So in the summertime, we have an easier time processing beer and ice cream and walking tacos. But that's because we are outside and we're active. So we're getting the sweat. We're getting the garbage out. And then we're also soaking in that sunlight. We're going to talk about it later. So sunlight, vitamin D. Sugar is also makes it really hard for our body to kick out bad stuff. So imagine, if you will, uh, a liquid with sugar in it. And actually, you don't have to imagine it because I have some here. And it appears to have separated out. But you're going to realize that this isn't a Powerade bottle because um, the irony, Powerade is a sugar in a liquid. So sugar in a liquid, you might notice that this is a little bit thick. Uh, a little sludgy, a little slow moving. You might even say that this is gross, all right? When we take sugar into our system, it does just that. It gets thick, it gets sludgy. We cannot get rid of it. Mucus, hello. That is where chiropractic is awesome. So most of the time when we are stuck in that fight or flight, everything is tight and compressed and there's pressure and there's tension. Everything is just bottled up. Chiropractic helps to relieve that pressure, that tension, that garbage, so things can drain and be open. So we're talking about lymphatics, they can drain there. Uh, we're talking about keeping our respiratory system open so we can cough and sneeze and snot and drain our ears, get things out that way. And then there's also keeping our digestive tract open so we can expel it out the other end. Now, if you know me, you know that I do not like talking about P double O P. It makes me very queasy. Um, so here in the office, by all means, I will ask you about it because it's crazy important. 
for the extent of this talk, this is as far as I will go talking about it. Just know that it is really important. Abby is going to be posting for you uh, a really cool resource. So what it's going to do, it's going to have a link. I want you to click the link and it'll take you to a place where you can put in your email. So we will actually email you um, this resource that'll talk about the P double O P that I don't want to say. Uh, it'll talk about that. It'll also talk about the other things um, we're going through right now. It'll give you some uh, strategies for how you can assess the health of your child. And it's also going to give you uh, kind of like a refresher of these tips that we're talking about. Okay. So like I said, Abby will get that posted. Please check that out. And um, the fifth and final thing we're going to talk about is supplementing. So we mentioned earlier about how important it is to get outside and get sunlight. Why? Well, sorry, I just saw my name and then I thought you were trying to flag me down, Abby. Um, so vitamin D is crazy important for immune system. And we get vitamin D best from sunlight. Our skin absorbs it and then we convert it in our liver to a form that we can use. And the problem is in North Dakota, we get sunlight approximately two months out of the year. That's just a joke. Um, but we definitely aren't getting as much sunlight as we do other times. So vitamin D is definitely going to be extremely important in keeping our immune system functioning well. Um, vitamin C, most people think of, uh, but it is really important in regulating um, the repair and functioning of our nervous system and immune system. So uh, I will actually just do a little so the vitamin D that we have here that I really like is a liquid. And um, the reason I like it, one, is because when you can adjust it. So when you are feeling ill or when you want to make sure, like if you've been around a lot of garbage, you can actually just take a couple more drops. Or um, the other reason I like it is it's good for the entire family. If you have a baby, you take a drop. You have um, an elementary age kid, maybe give them two or three. You have an adult, you, you take five or six all right so I do really like uh, the liquid vitamin D and we will also be posting if you're curious like about vitamin D and why it's awesome um, it's not gonna be the specific product that we carry here but the the website will have some really awesome Q&A's at the very bottom so keep scrolling uh, if you would like to learn more about vitamin D and then vitamin C um, we have here as well so um, Hopefully you learned some, some helpful tips tonight and also gained a little bit better of an understanding about your body and how it works. Um, if you feel like your family is just plagued by cold and flu season, if you absolutely dread the change in seasons because of the uncertainty that it means for your family's health, it is time to make a change. Please, 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 it's time to make a change. We can help. Healing Touch, we want you, your family, your kiddos, our community. We want you healthy. We want you happy. So by all means, please share this um, with someone who needs to hear it because we, we really, please just help each other break that cycle of sickness and instead get into one of health and wellness. And actually, this is, this is going to be random, but while I'm on the topic of uh, community involvement and helping each other out, it is February 8th. It is Giving Hearts Day. So I want to encourage everybody to please go to givingheartsday.org. Um, look through their list of organizations and charities that we have here in North Dakota and I believe Minnesota also. And consider donating to a cause that speaks to you. Um, this is a 24-hour online giving event. It's all about um, giving back to our community and supporting each other. So, uh, your checklist, your five things, Giving Hearts Day, call us and we can help. Have a great night and thanks so much for listening. Let's see now if I can turn this off without Abby. Ooh, okay. Goodbye. You are very welcome. Thanks for listening.